What makes a good leader? It is a question we have always asked ourselves throughout mankind regarding what makes a good leader. What are some of the core features and qualities a leader ought to possess? Can anyone become a leader or is it limited to certain people? When discussing the nature of leadership in the philosophical sphere, we must remind ourselves that the leadership literature is very thin because it is in fact very difficult to determine leadership. Many philosophers and actual leaders have tried to describe it in various ways, yet no consensus or basis has been established. Hence, I have the liberty and will attempt to unfold the nature of leadership in the most practical way. Our kingdom is designed to structure itself into hierarchies, among them having a natural leader who can guide the tribe, clan, group, or an organization. Without structure and without leadership, we cannot function and become simply basic cannibals. The wrens, which are the birds, die as soon as their leader decays. A similar process happens among us people too, for when our king dies, we immediately seek a replacement, oftentimes putting the king's son in charge of the tribe. We must admit that we are organized in a patriarchal structure, opposite to what most individuals claim to say otherwise. For we have always organized ourselves in clans and tribes and moved from place to place like that of the chimpanzees. Moreover, leadership has been always seen as a masculine duty rather than feminine, for the very reason that the biblically and metaphorically the male figure symbolizes strength, order and stability, while the female figure rather expresses chaos and fluctuation, mostly associated with giving life which holds a hefty symbolism, therefore. Let us begin by saying that not everyone can become a leader, for in order to become one, you must intrinsically have the qualities and spirit to lead. Qualities such as taking accountability, courage, flexibility, innovation, passion, being eager to learn new things, patience, resilience, and most importantly, trust, are just a few core traits of a good leader. As Marcus Aurelius, the Roman Stoic philosopher, quotes, Make sure you're not made emperor. Avoid that imperial stain. It can happen to you, so keep yourself simple, good, pure, saintly, plain, a friend of justice, God-fearing, gracious, affectionate, and strong for your proper work. It is of high importance to remember that when chosen to be a leader of a tribe or society, one must never forget the simplicity of it. The world changes every second, circumstances shift from one moment to the next, hence for whatever reason being appointed as leader can happen to you if nature sees fit. Furthermore, life is chess, you cannot change the rules, you cannot change the system, and you certainly cannot change other people around you. Therefore, it is essential to make the next best move, even if you are surrounded by enemies or the situation you are in might be incredibly challenging. Just like in chess, you cannot flip the chessboard and have it your way. That is perhaps the hallmark of a leader. A leader's behavior says everything the tribe needs to know. For if he expresses illogical anger and discontent on an irrational basis, the tribe will begin to lose trust and confidence in that leader. Because nobody wants a capricious and whiny little boy leading a nation, God forbid. Marcus Aurelius went on to say, a real man doesn't give way to anger and discontent, and such a person has strength, courage, and endurance, unlike the angry and complaining. The nearer a man comes to a calm mind, the closer he is to strength. A calm mind is key to success and key to guiding the tribe clearly and precisely. Lastly, a leader should be someone to look up to. He ought to model himself in such a way that could bring the tribe together and make the folks aspire to become like him. For example, there is a reason why many view Jesus Christ as their king. Why? Because he embodies the ideal version of a man. He symbolizes the sacrifice he has pursued for the sake of humanity and inspired people to become good human beings in this world. As soon as a leader becomes highly ideological, he is no longer a trustworthy leader, let alone be human at all. He must therefore become more human and personal with his folk. And let us also not forget that you do not have to like everything about the leader. They are just as flawed as you are after all. But as long as the leader upholds the core philosophical principles and values in the society, 
he is a leader to be admired, especially when promises are kept, which is a rarity. Even though we have in some way explained what it means to be a leader, there is much more to leadership and the values those leaders carry. Now, if you want to go into the modern world, I believe our leaders in the world overall are no match for Marcus Aurelius or Winston Churchill. We do not have strong masculine leaders left, for they all represent weakness, too much femininity, and always seem to compromise their standards. A real leader most certainly would never lower his standards for anything. We must not also forget that we aren't just talking about the political leadership. Leadership is present in every realm of this world. Perhaps even more important is taking the leadership role in the family or in the smaller communities. For having strong families lead to strong villages, strong villages lead to strong towns, strong towns lead to strong cities, and lastly, strong cities lead to a strong nation. For it all begins at home in terms of what values and discipline you impose upon your children and other family members. Perhaps you have an innate fuel to become a leader, regardless of which sphere. You might be shy or afraid to take the first step, but I highly encourage men and women to take more and more responsibility and ownership for failures, and most importantly, always be brutally honest and transparent with your actions. Otherwise, you are an unworthy leader who no one will respect and instead will just spit on you. And lastly, let men see, let them know, a real man who lives as he was meant to live, Marcus Aurelius.